Uh, this morning, I want to share actually a new concept uh, with you we developed over the past year. We call it uh, collaborative value networks and how you can use them to improve performance as your companies. Um, business drivers. You know, I deliberately didn't change the slide from last year because drivers actually don't change that much from year to year. But the intensity level of these drivers, in fact, keeps on going up every year. You know, we've just seen some recent events in the Middle East that has increased the un uncertainty level. Security, both physical and cybersecurity threat level, remains the same or keeps on going up. Scarce resources, you know, we are fighting the battle. You know, looking for alternative resources and so forth. You know, global competition. Right now, uh, companies from some of the emerging countries are becoming stronger and powerful. They are actually going to be giving us more and more competition. Regulations are continuing to increase. Smart grid. Every country is trying to build their smart grid because we have to. Our current grid simply can't meet the needs of uh, our future energy needs. We will talk more about easy IT solutions. So drivers are the same, but intensity keeps on going up. Changing workforce. Every year we have thousands of new young people coming into the workforce, and they are coming with new expectations, new ways to work. You know, we have to adjust our solutions, our business processes uh, to uh, bring them as part of the workforce. Now, I would say right now, there is a more investment, corporate as well as VC investment going on in IT solutions than probably at any time, even probably higher than the bubble days of the back uh, uh, late uh, to, to year 2000 and 2001. You can see, uh, those of you who follow, the valuation of Facebook goes up by billions of dollars almost every year. You know, uh, they recently actually, obviously, was valued at more than $50 billion, and it will keep on going up. So there is a, so many new technologies are coming in the marketplace and new solutions. And a lot of these solutions are much, much easier to use. You know, the reason millions of people join Facebook every year, every day, actually, is because it's easy to use. You know, our cell phones, every, you have them because they're easy to use. So, and the, what I want to mention is next big thing happening in cell phones and so forth is the location-based. You know, you can now get services, depend as you travel around the world, you want to find, you know, some good hotels here, near the hotel where you're staying. All you have to do is actually sign up for a service. They will provide you services more on location-based. So there is a lot of, actually many new companies are, uh, actually, we are going to see uh, coming on board and becoming going public and so forth. What I really want to focus on is this connected devices. And in fact, the people don't realize one, one thing Smart Grid is doing is going to be connecting all the devices in our homes. I mean, yeah, you're going to see as actually Grid gets smarter, every device you connect to the Grid is going to become an intelligent device. You know, sitting right here, you can change the temperature in your home, or you can turn the washing machine on, uh, or whatever you want to do. And just imagine the world when all of the devices you know, in our homes and our plants, you know, you guys, in fact, can imagine it better because you've been, you have uh, had all these intelligent devices in your plants. But you now think that if you have in homes, in your car, everywhere you go. So, so we think the smart grid, in fact, is going to become just as powerful or even more powerful than the internet. And the beauty is, you know, we have all of these, actually, technologies. And the complexity is being hidden, what I call cloud computing. You know, we have all these data centers out there. You know, you can start thinking about data center 
the same as a power plant. You know, power, power plant provides us the juice. A data center provides us all these IT capabilities. So, it, I mean, I look at it very similar. So we are going to have a lot of these capabilities, and fortunately, we can start actually pushing the complexity out to the data centers. Now I want to read you a couple of quotes from Bob McDonald, CEO of P&G. And these quotes come right from their 2010 annual report. You can go to P&G website and read them. The first one was digitizing P&G. Bob says, with digitization, our goal is to standardize, automate, and integrate systems and data so we can create a real-time operating and decision-making environment. We want P&G to be the most technology-enabled company in the world. And on real-time data, we are targeting a 20 to 25 percent reduction in some spending areas. And we are looking for a seven-fold increase in real-time data. The important point I want to make, you know, here is, this is what, it comes right from the top, from the CEO, and he's targeting 20, 25 percent reduction in cost. The important point is all of you guys, we have to start setting our targets high. You know, just by trying to cut costs by a couple of percent isn't going to cut it. So we have to think of new ways of doing business. Those of you who were here last year, we heard a terrific presentation from Tom Lang of PNG. How PNG uses simulation and modeling to help them improve their plant performance. And snippets of his presentation are on our website uh, and even on YouTube. You can actually uh, find them and uh, listen to them. And also, we have several executives from PNG in the audience. I encourage you to talk to them. You know how PNG is trying to become you know, most technology-enabled company in the world. Now, new solutions are enabling new business models. You know, over the past decade or two, we have already seen the transformation in retail industry, publishing business. In fact, right now, there is a big transition going on, transformation going on in two big industries, the power sector. In the power sector, we have all kinds of new solar farms and wind farms being built. And I mentioned that smart grid is being upgraded and so forth. So the whole, the business model of the power sector is going to change. And the same thing is happening with automotive industries. You know, as we move, transition from gasoline cars to electric cars and hybrid cars, you know, coal competency needed to build an electric car is totally different as compared to gasoline cars. So we see some already new companies, you know, go public, you know, Tesla Motors, and we'll see many more. So, so I think we are going to continue to see this kind of transfer, transformation take place in some other industries as well. So I think you have to be prepared for these kind of major shifts in our industry. Over the past decade, as companies globalize their manufacturing operations, they had to actually, their supply chain became complex. So they had to start optimizing their supply chain. So I would say over the past decade or more, companies were focused on optimizing their supply chain. And they did a very good job. And back in the year 2000, in fact, ARC, I developed this concept we call collaborative manufacturing management, or we called it CMM, to help you visualize how a plant is kind of, is, is a node on your very complex supply chain network. And it's a very complex node, but it is a node. And I know many of you are using this concept it kind of helps you visualize all the, educate your people. Uh, but, but the issue right now is that, yes, companies have their supply chain automated very, very well. But now, today, 
as most companies are trying to become more innovation centric, trying to be, develop more products faster. The issue is now companies are finding their design and engineering solutions don't talk to their business systems. They don't talk to the supply chain network. Their design and engineering people a lot of times don't collaborate very well. 